Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video and today we're going to be doing an idea which one of you guys suggested in the comments actually and this idea was by um, Creeptastic um, and yeah he um, said what if you tidal lock the earth to the sun in the new update and I I'm surprised I haven't actually tried this I haven't even done it in my spare time I've literally never ever tried this in the new update so it should be interesting um, to see what happens I think most of us probably know what will happen but yeah, let's go ahead and find out and see um, how the game does it so earth obviously is right here so we're just going to get straight into it. So yeah, where are we here? Okay, and also a massive thank you to um, Creeptastic for sending that idea in as well. Because yeah, I, I can't believe I've never done it, honestly. But yeah, anyway, so where are we? So we're just going to slow it down. Um, so we'll tidy lock it around this area. Earth is a bit glitchy in this update still. Some of the water isn't showing. Like the water levels are a little weird. But yeah, we'll let that slide for now since it's still pretty much um, how it normally look. Just a few little things that are um, a little off. But anyways, here we go. So tidy lock, we're going to click that. And there we go. So now Earth is tidy locked with the sun. So the same face will always face the sun and the other side will always be in darkness. So it seems to be um, the closest part to the sun looks to be the sort of Africa area here. So sort of where the country of Morocco resides. So I say that sort of area here. Um, I think that would probably be the area which um, is going to get hit the hardest here due to where it is. But anyways, let's go ahead and speed up time. Obviously, the water is going to obviously change it. We need to go to the surface options here. Um, and we need to, um, where are we? I'm still getting used to these um, new options. Where, where are we? It's not that. No, it's not that one. Right, yeah, we need the, yeah, there, there we go. So it's these, no, it's not that one. Yeah, I'm I'm still um, I'm still not used to this stuff. We, no, what am I doing? We need the, where, where are we here? No, no, we'll just leave it on temperature, actually. No, that's fine. Yeah, I'm still trying to, I'm still not used to navigating around this yet. But anyways, let's roll. So as we can see, the water is, um, it looks really awesome when it does that, I have to say. I haven't, I haven't actually really looked at Earth in the update um, sped up like this. But look at all the water sort of going around there. That's quite cool. But it's just kind of weird how it... You can see the whole United Kingdom, for example. There's not much water. The English Channel is completely dried up. And this was an Earth I just spawned in as well. So it's, it's kind of weird um, why it's doing that. Because the save of this simulation, it removes all the water on Earth. So I just spawned a new Earth in for this. But yeah, it's, it's kind of weird how all the coastlines are all working like that. They're not fully um, correct. But anyways, we can start to see, if you look carefully... Actually, no, what I will do is I can um, add that to this menu. So we can actually keep an eye on it as well. Actually, we can add all of them. We can actually make use of um, all these options. So water depth. I'm actually going to um, yeah, do that as well. Oh, no, no, I want ice thickness, actually. No, I want to do that. So if I add that, like that, maybe, that, maybe we'll get some data for that once it starts to um, freeze up in certain areas. So... There we go, and yeah, I'll leave it. I'll just keep those two up for now. But yeah, now let's um, speed up time a little more since we are going very slow. This is all happening in minutes, remember, so we won't go particularly fast. So yeah, let's um, really speed up and let this um, effect take place. So it's now um, a couple of days, as we can see, and obviously the tidy locked earth, it's not rotating, so it's only turning um, when it's pointing at the sun. So as you can see there, the same face is always facing the sun. So yeah, pretty weird, and as you can see the temperature on this side, it's starting to heat up. We can see it's going to the 40s, the 50s now, getting pretty hot. But obviously the other areas are only at 9 degrees and it's still cooling down. So we'll just keep an eye on that. And also we can see some ice data starting to appear as well. So that's um, interesting. Um, I'm going to go onto a water depth. I don't know if this will change or not, but we'll uh, add it to the menu anyway there. Um, but yeah, you can see the temperature. It's now going to go into the minuses as we can see. And you can see the ice is starting to build up around the coldest areas. The, the um, black areas are at minus 10 now. So as you can see, Australia there already freezing up. As you can see, it's complete darkness. Um, how far has Earth been going now? I think we've been going for almost... Okay, so maybe coming up to a year or so now. I'm not sure um, how fast we're, um, it's been. But you can start to see that, yeah, all of the, um, all of the side... So um, we've got Asia there, we've got Australia in the south. That's all starting to completely freeze up. We can see India as well. That's all um, got snow on it. Um, there we go. And as for Africa and then this side, um, and obviously a bit of South America, North America as well, they're all getting very, very hot, as we can see there. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty crazy stuff. Um, and, yeah, so, yeah, there we go. All right, so let's um, keep it rolling. But, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. And I can't believe I've never tried this with all of these um, all of these new settings and t all of these new tabs and ways to look at the planet. I can't believe I've ever done this, honestly. Yeah, so massive thanks to them for um, telling me to do it because yeah, I'm, I'm very silly. I don't know why I've not done it yet. But, yeah, here we go. So it's really cool with the surface grids with all this stuff, all of these new uh, menus and stuff you can open. But, yeah, as you can see, the Earth's temperature. So the white area is now into the 200s and it's still increasing. It's still going up. So say if we compare that to, um, we'll compare that to Mercury, for instance. 
um, average surface temperature is 126. So it's actually, some of the points on Earth are actually warming up to mercury levels of temperature now. That's uh, pretty crazy to think about with a tidy locked Earth. As we can see, the water level is obviously changing. Obviously, since it's all ice on this side, so the water is just completely frozen up now. So yeah, pretty crazy stuff. Maybe maybe deep down, there'd still be liquid water. But obviously, since it doesn't get any sunlight, it could just be completely frozen um, up like that. And also, if we look at the ice thickness, obviously, there's no ice where the hot patch is up here. So you can see that black area. In the ice thickness tab completely nothing there at all but also you can see the australia area there completely frozen up which is pretty crazy and it looks like the area the alaska area up here which um goes close to russia in the north of the pacific here that's all completely frozen up as well just going um studio so we can see it it's quite hard to spot it actually um yeah but yeah this is the um alaska sort of russia area there um in the pacific so yeah there we go but yeah let's um keep it rolling and yeah, there we go. So how are we doing? So which areas actually, um, while we're looking at this, which areas are actually still sort of uh, the normal sort of temperature? So if we look here, the blue areas are at minus 17. They're still changing. So so 10 degrees is about there. So it's going to be areas right on the edge here. So if we compare it to, it's kind of annoying it doesn't show the globe. It's hard to work out where each area is. But if you compare it to the other two sides, obviously going to be the areas quite close to the nighttime zone but not too close to the day area because obviously this area here um oh yeah all of this this all of this area here this is where that white zone is in the temperature 275 degrees right now but um it's still red um further out we've got the yellow zone the green zone is still hot you need to be in that light blue to dark blue zone that sort of mid area between the light blue and the dark blue on the map here that's the 13 sort of degree area so that's sort of roughly what the normal sort of average temperature is um for earth in the game so yeah that would sort of be where you want to um hang out so yeah if we look there i'd say it's only going to be the very very the area is very close to the ice bits on the bits of land and obviously most of the um areas close to the ice are actually just the ocean so That'd be quite um, interesting to see how that would work. So, yeah, ma mainly areas here. So all where this ice is touching the main um, land that isn't ice, that's that's probably where you're going to want to be. Because, yeah, anywhere here, this is all going to be ultra hot, as you can see by the spectrum with all the colours here. So, yeah, pretty crazy stuff. Um, let's um, keep it going, though, see if anything changes. But So we'll just let it go. But um, not much is really going to happen since the climate is pretty much just locked at um, the same all over. Since it doesn't rotate, the temperature won't change hardly. As long as the sun stays with the same luminosity um, and the Earth just stays in its orbit, nothing's going to change, really. So it's just going to be permanently locked in this completely half-frozen, half-burning world. So... Yeah, you'd need to be in that twilight zone between the hot and the cold, the day and the night. That's where you're gonna want to be, because yeah, this um, not very, not a very nice world anymore. Um, Earth with this um, current setup with the tidy lock in, because obviously if we um, turn off the tidy lock and we pull it back to 24 hours of rotation, so where are we? Age? No, we don't age. Rotational period. So we're gonna put that back to um, 24 hours like that so if we do that we we're going to watch as all these settings change back to normal um probably so there we go so if we just let it go yeah there we are so if you start to look at the ice depth the water the water depth they're all going to reset hopefully back to normal and obviously the temperature is all going to cool down the white zone is going to start um disappearing as you can see the blue is starting to cover the whole area um now which is pretty cool also if we look at the earth itself um how are we doing here Africa has flooded apparently um, for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that, but as we can see, the ice area is actually getting some sunlight now, so it's going to start warming up all that ice. But obviously, it's going to take a couple of months. That ice is very, very deep in the Pacific Ocean, I'm assuming. So obviously, yeah, it was very cold. It was going into the minus hundreds um, and stuff like that. So it was very cold. So that probably would have frozen pretty far down from the surface level. So yeah, that ice is going to take a couple of months to probably melt. If we just let it go here, as you can see, we're speeding up at eight days. We're going up to yeah, a month now. It's taken quite a while for all that to melt, as we can see. The hot area still taking time to dissipate and go back to normal. So, yeah, even if you um, let the Earth go back to normal, it's still going to take quite a while to recover. I mean, look at it go around the sun here. It's taking multiple rotation or multiple orbits around the sun here to actually reset to what it was. Because as you can see, it's still 85 degrees in the white zone there. So, still very, very hot and not really uh, where you want to be. As we can see, the ice thickness as well. It's still, the last bits of it are just um, melting away now. And also the water depth is resetting um, as well. How's the, how's the planet itself looking visually now? So uh, here we go. So, um, okay, so the Africa is actually um, looking all good now. 
Um, so it looks like all that flooding has disappeared since it's all uh, melted on the yeah, so the Pacific Ocean's practically all melted back to normal. As we can see, the poles, the north and the south, they've still got some ice that needs to um, melt away still because obviously they're still the colder areas um, like they normally are. So obviously they're going to take a little longer to reset um, completely. As we can see, the, the red zone is starting to spread across the whole um, equator now, as we can see. So it's sort of going back to the normal um, for the Earth there. The white area, I'm assuming, should completely disappear. I'm not entirely sure. It should, yeah. Is it going to disappear? Oh, you can see it's pretty much just reset into its normal um, state now. The average surface temperature, that's um, looking more normal as well. Um, but yeah, there we go. So the white area is now spreading across the whole equator like it normally would um, in this case. Um, obviously, the hottest part is going to be on the equator area. So yeah, that is all um, looking good. Obviously, the Earth's tilt was reset when we clicked tidy lock, so it's going to be slightly different, but I'll just try and, try and manually fix it. I mean, it's not going to be completely accurate, but yeah, there you go. So it'd be more like more like this, wouldn't it? Slight, slightly tilted on its side. It's probably not going to make too much difference with the temperature here, but it probably would clean up that little bit of extra ice. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, how are we doing? So yeah, all, all the water depth is pretty much just resetting. So you'll see there's a bit of ice. Let's just let the game go. How long is it going to take for it to all to... Uh, get that back to normal you can see mercury's going pretty crazy as we're speeding this up but yeah there goes so that last bit of ice is still sticking around um so it looks like it probably is going to take quite a while to recover i mean if we just go ahead and look at earth again you can see the north is still a little frozen from what it should be so yeah pretty um interesting whilst doing that so it's got a studio you can still see yeah this is still um frozen up which is kind of weird i mean i'll just reset it actually again just to keep an eye on it but yeah you can see um just from the globe itself here you can see the ice is still um, a little funny but obviously i'm i am probably going to put some of it down to the game being a little funny because the update is still a little glitchy in some areas but you, you, the, the rough idea of how it works is still presented quite well i'd say obviously it all froze up on one side but obviously as it's um reset back to its normal state also it's going to take a bit of time to reset as we saw but i mean to its original state it's still a little different there's still a lot of ice in the north here and i'm not sure that's entirely correct to what it was normally like i'm pretty sure we can all agree on that it's not completely correct but you still get the general idea of this is how it would work um, and yeah there you go so you can still see that ice depth is still just chilling in some of the areas which isn't um completely correct but you can see the temperature is probably the most in interesting part of how hot it got at some points i mean we can we can do it again honestly we can just completely do it again so if we tidy lock again so where are we now so yeah earth is now tidy locked so which face is uh, facing the sun again so okay so it looks like the africa area so it looks like it just resets to this side all the time but as, if we look at that temperature area we speed up time Look how the white zone just completely points to the area which is facing the sun. It's really cool the way this works. And yeah, definitely, definitely a really, really cool what this is in the game now. I mean, look, look, that is that is awesome. So as you can see, it's completely frozen up on the Pacific Ocean side again. You can see the water depth and the ice depth is all changing again. I don't know, it's a little funny with the way it works, but you can see, still see um, roughly um, what's going on there. So yeah, pretty, um, pretty crazy indeed with all that. So yeah, there we go. Surface, how are we doing? So that's a little stretched out, as we can see, uh, ice thickness. You can see it's all, yeah, it's all changing again, um, as expected. So, yeah, really, really cool. You can see that um, all there as well. Let's go back to the um, object itself there. But, yeah, they can get a good look of it. So, yeah, completely frozen on this side. And then you still got the little twilight area in between the, the hot and the cold area, which would probably be the most safe place to stay, unless you want to be in the ultra-hot temperatures, or you want to freeze on the uh, nighttime side. So, you can see right here, it's actually gone to minus 75. So for comparison, minus 75, if we go to Mars, for example, so where's Mars? So we go to uh, Mars's um, surface here, set minus 75. So Mars right now is at minus 40 in the hottest areas. And the coldest areas, they're going to the... But obviously Mars still rotates. Mars isn't entirely locked. So Earth's temperatures here of um, minus 75, that's colder than any point on Mars as of right now. As you can see, Mars, yep. Um, let me just lower this because it's quite annoying. So let's just uh, let's just put this back to its normal sort of area. So there we go, and then go to it again. But you can see there, there you go. So you can see, see, yeah, some of the dark areas on Mars they're going to minus 60, but none of it has gone to minus 75 like Earth has. So you can see the tidally lock-in effect has made it colder than Mars at the, in the nighttime zone. So yeah, if, unless you want to be experiencing Mars temperatures, I'd recommend you uh, stay in that little area between the light and the dark because otherwise you're going to get very very hot as we can see it goes up to 300 degrees which is bordering venus temperatures so if we compare it to venus obviously some some of venus is in that 300 area as we can see here obviously venus is very different with the way it works but you can see some areas are still in that area but i think mercury would probably be a better comparison obviously it doesn't have that atmosphere on it so if we look at mercury 200 degrees and then if we look at earth 326 so yeah, you can see it's, it's 
in between the Mercury Venus sort of area in the day the daylight area so you can see massive effects here I mean some of the water it looks like it's actually evaporated in the Mediterranean Ocean there you can see and the Red Sea and all that it looks like um it's completely evaporated just due to the intense heat and it's obviously yeah pretty pretty um massive um massive changes going on for the climate on earth here so yeah i'm pretty sure if this was to happen in reality it would be absolute chaos um with um trying finding a place to live obviously with both sides of the planet being completely ridiculously um out of place for us humans but it'd just be that little zone in between the light and the dark that's probably the only safe place but obviously if you're trying to move the whole population there probably be a bit chaotic with um trying to move all that many people obviously seven to 8 billion people now that's um that's quite a lot so i'll be here i'm pretty mad but yeah really really cool experiment and yeah massive thanks again for um the guy who um came up the idea so yeah massive thanks to creeptastic really really cool um seeing all of these um new features in um in action obviously with the the temperature the ice the water thickness all of that obviously comparing it to the other planets as well really really awesome just seeing it obviously there's mercury again like it's crazy how earth is now at mercury venus sort of temperatures that is pretty crazy obviously in the night time it's in mars sort of temperatures but let's just go out let's say um, we want to compare it to pluto for example so yeah really weird here but yeah pluto's still way out of range how about how about jupiter how about how, how about jupiter so here, here's jupiter okay so yeah Ju it's, yeah minus 151 it's obviously not nothing compared to the earth but maybe what about series can it can it compete with series for cold temperatures let's see here so series is minus 101 Okay, so it's almost at Ceres for, for temp I mean, yeah, minus 75 is its coldest point, and then Ceres is minus 100, so it's catching up to the sort of Ceres area, but Mars is still the best comparison um, for matching with Earth now, so obviously Mars also goes to around the minus 60, 70 area there as well, but also you remember, these guys all still rotate, so if you tightly locked Mars, for example, I reckon it'll get a lot colder, but I mean, we could do it for another video, so if you guys want to see that, um, or we could do it with another planet, I mean, Venus, Venus could be quite interesting, I may do a video on that. I want to see how Venus would work with its massive greenhouse effect. Would tidy locking cause much effect, or would it not? I mean, I reckon it still would pay a, a play a big part. Obviously, with the greenhouse, not much for the heat to escape anyway. But I reckon over if over a long period of time, it probably could cool down eventually. I'm not I'm not too sure on that. But yeah, maybe if you maybe I should do a video on that if you guys want to see it. Of course, let me know down below I'm in the comments if you want to see that. But yeah, today I think this has been a really really cool video. Just checking all this out. So yeah, massive thank you um, if you got to this point in the video and for watching it all as well. Massive thank you um, for you guys there. Let's see if we can go for about um, 40 likes on today's video, guys, and also subscribe if you're new. Helps on the journey to 12,000 subscribers as well. Amazing stuff. And obviously a massive thank you for 11,000 again. It's absolutely amazing. We have really started this year on a high point with the um, subscribers from last year as well. So yeah, just massive thank you um, all for that as well. And also if you want to chat with me um, outside of videos and stuff as well, make sure to join my Discord server. Link in the description where you can send me systems and just have a general chat with me about anything as well. So if you want to do that, um, yeah, link in the description. But yeah, that is everything, guys. So make sure you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.